In today's video, you're going to learn everything you need to know regarding props within React. We are going to talk about what props are, how they work, and then I'm going to show you some examples of using props within your components and some kind of key things to remember when using props. So first things first, what are props? Well, just how you can pass arguments to functions, you pass props into other components, and that helps make your components more dynamic. So props are very similar to how you would use arguments in regular JavaScript functions, as at the end of the day, a component within React is just a JavaScript function. So the way that we pass arguments to that function is using props. And if you haven't seen my video on components within React or you're not familiar with using components, I would go check out that prior to this video. So props allow you to pass effectively arguments to other components and make your components more reusable, more dynamic, and much more useful throughout your application. So how do props actually work? Well, you use props just how you would use an HTML attribute or very similar to how you would use an HTML attribute. And I will show you some examples of this in just a second, but React will pass these props as an object. And the properties of that object are going to be the arguments to that component that you want to create that dynamic component with. So when you pass a prop to a component, it's going to be on a object. And the properties of that object are going to be kind of the key value pair of that attribute that you put on the props. So since these are passed as an object and the properties of this object are your arguments, this is why it's kind of called props but we'll show some examples of this here now. So right here on line 15, I defined a component called person. And it's very common within a component to take a single argument and call that argument props. So you can accept the properties of the argument that's passed in here. Now here on line 25, I have a component called app. And here I render two instances of this person component. And as you can see here, it looks like I add some HTML attributes to this component. But what this is really doing is it's passing props here to this person component. And when I add this name is equal to Joe and age is equal to 30 within this person component here as kind of HTML attributes, but remember this is JSX, this is not HTML, it's going to actually pass those as arguments to this person function or this person component. And this is going to be an object here. And these attributes are going to be properties on this object. So this is going to create a name property with a value of Joe. And this attribute here is going to create an age property with a value of 30. And then in this person component, I can access those using props.name. So I'm accessing this object and accessing the name value. And then here I'm accessing the age value. And what this is gonna do is for this person instance here, it's gonna have a name of Joe in an age of 30. But for this person instance, it's gonna have a name of Laura in an age of 40. So it's basically allowing me to call my component here. So when I render this JSX, it's effectively calling this component and I'm passing in these attributes on this props object. So props allow you to pass arguments to a component, and this is gonna create two unique instances of this person component, making this much more dynamic. And a key thing to remember here is that I can only pass props from parent to child and not vice versa. This is one-way data flow within React. It only goes down your component tree you can't pass it back up. Now you can use callbacks and kind of effectively do that, but we can touch on that in future videos. So for example, when I render this person within the app component, then I can access these attributes within the person component, but nothing in here is going to allow me to access this app component within the person component. Like I can't do props.parent and then access that component in some way. Now you could potentially pass down a callback function into this person and then call that function within this component and it could have some effect in this app. But in general, you pass props from parent to child and not vice versa. 
Now, a very common pattern that you're going to see when using props is instead of just labeling this parameter here props, you'll actually see people destructure properties from this object right in the parentheses here. So here I could do name and age. And what this is going to do is I know that this component is going to have a object passed to it, the props object. And you pass that props object using these attributes here. And on that object, I know I'm going to have the properties of name and age. So here I just destructure from this object name and age. And then I can use that within my person object and render out the name and age. So it makes things just a little bit more clean. And all this will make more sense when I go to the example here. So going to this example, what I have over here on the left is some HTML. And then I have my React over on the right side here in which I have my the very same things I had in my code editor. I have my app component and that renders two instances of this person component. And then I render my app within this root HTML component. So just like my example here, it renders two inst instances of my person component and it passes these attributes here or these props to my person component. And as you can see, what this will render out to my page is Joe and it has his age right underneath him and then Laura with her age underneath her name. Because in this component, I render an H1 with props.name and then a P tag with props.h. So in this instance, it's going to render the name of Joe and the age of 30 like it does here. And then this instance, it's going to render Laura with the age of 40. So as you can see, I render the same component here, but I pass props to that component to make things much more dynamic. Now, one thing that you might do somewhat often with Re within React is called prop drilling or passing props multiple levels down your component hierarchy. So here I create another function called child and it defines a parameter props and it does a very similar thing to this person component here. And it says my parent is props.parent name. And then my name is props.child name. So if I want to use this child component, I need to pass it the props of parent name and child name. So here within my person, I'm going to render a child and I'm going to give it parent name is equal to, well, what is the parent's name here? Well, it's actually this component's props.name. So I'm going to pass props.name and that's going to pass the name of this person here. And then I can also pass my child name. And then here, this isn't specific to the person here, so I can pass any name here. So we'll just do that there. And then you can see when I render this person component, and I render two instances of this com person component, it's now going to have this child component here saying my parent is Joe, which is correct. The parent is Joe. And then it says my name is Sue for the child name. And then for Laura, it's going to say my parent is Laura and my name is Sue. So as you can see here, I pass the name prop of Joe to this person component, and then I pass it another level down to this child component. So you can keep passing props down your component hierarchy from parent to child. And you'll see that fairly often within your React apps, passing your props multiple levels. Now, if you find yourself doing this several levels, that might be a good sign that you should use something like recoil or some other state management or potentially even context within React, but I'll cover those in separate videos. All right, so just to round out this example here, I have a main app component and that renders two instances of the person component. I give it two HTML attributes here and these attributes are going to be passed as one single argument to my person component and that argument is going to be an object. And on that object, it is going to have a name and age property with the corresponding values here. And this is going to allow me to create much more dynamic components and much more dynamic apps and then Keep in mind that you can continue to pass your props down 
the hierarchy in which I have a person component and that renders a child component and I pass the props all the way through to this child component here. Now, one key thing to remember about props is that they must be read only, meaning you should not mutate your props in your child components. So here I have another app component and in this app component, I accept a little bit different arguments here in which I pass one attribute to the person component and that is of details. And this attribute here is going to be passed to my person as an object and then I destructure the details property. And what I do in this person component is I mutate the details.name to equal just this hard-coded value of Ryan. This is a big no-no. You should not mutate your props within child components. These should be immutable and they should be read only. You should not mutate your props as this can cause some tricky bugs in your programs. So props in React is how you pass arguments to your React components. They're just like how you would pass arguments to JavaScript functions. And you pass props to a component in a way that looks very similar to HTML attributes, but these are actually JSX attributes. And what this is gonna do right here is it is going to pass an object to this person component. And on that object, it's gonna have the properties of name and age with the corresponding values. And that allows me to render out a dynamic person component. And then it's common to see this pattern to where you destructure those properties right in the parentheses of your component name. And then you can only pass props from parent to child within React and those props must remain read only and you should not mutate the props in your children components. So I hope you learned all about props here. I'll have future videos on children within React, state management and so on. So stay tuned for that and I'll see you in that next one.